নামটা জুড়ে বলেন বল জগদীশ বালা ভেরি গুড সো দিস ইজ मिस्टर জগদীশ বালা বয়সটা কত বলতে আপনি 66 years old man come up with the sudden onset of vomiting having some of the bad like having some of the balance problems so i've been in a hospital 3 days back and it was sudden onset so yes my doctor i'd like to talk on a very important topic and very very uh, uh, very important topic right you must know that is the cerebellar syndrome so yes uh, if we're going to the cerebellar syndrome i'd like to talk in neurology basically we need to know the three important questions and answer so in full neurology we have the three questions and the answers all together so you can be able to reach your diagnosis and make the diagnosis immediately after that and giving the patients most benefits to them as well so yes in our life also right we need to know the three questions and answers all together right if you know that very well that why are we were the human being right why we are here today in, in this art art and metallurgical world and actually what is the target of our life so these are the three important questions if anybody and if, if any human being knows about it so yes he is successful or she is successful or something so yes in neurology also the three important questions is really important so the first question is of what type of the lesion and second question why is the lesion and third question why is the lesion it has been what type of the lesion is what is the lesion the question the answer is the varieties of the lesion that we are getting in neurology the starting with the upper motor motor neuron type of the lesion second time the lower motor neuron type and third is the cerebellar center so you need to go through the extensive examination findings so that you can come up with the yes the upper motor lower motor and also the cerebellar center i'll talk in another video clips regarding the upper motor and lower motor but i'll be very focused on to the cerebellar center so yes the type of the lesion you need to go through yes the cerebellar center second important talk the yes the where is the lesion we have the cerebellum if you know the cerebellum can you give me the paper blank sheet as a blank sheet the column so focus here so it's very important if you know the cerebellum we know the cerebellum has the two important parts this is called the cerebellar hemisphere cerebellar hemisphere and this is the body or the vermis cerebellar vermis so the same thing also we have the human thing you see or we can write like that so we have the two hands and the two legs right so if we if i close this hand and legs together hand and legs together so we have also the vermis cerebellar hemisphere both side and having we have the body as well so this is the vermis we can say what i'm saying my it's very important if the right sided cerebellar hemisphere is involved so the right upper limb and right lower limb will have the cerebellar lesion same talk the left side is cerebellar hemisphere is involved so the left side of the body means the left upper limb and left lower limb will be the involved so we have the body like the trunk and also cerebellum also having the body the cerebellar vermis so having the cerebellar vermis problem so yes the body and we call the trunkal adducta will have the problem yes so the type of the lesion it does essentially mean that the whether this is the cerebellar hemisphere left side or right side or the cerebellar vermis lesion and part of the underlying etiology why this happened so yes my dear doctor this gentleman comes up with the sudden onset once again the sudden onset having some vomiting having vomiting having the balancing problem so we will show some of the clinical features that this gentleman has so it took about it to dara and question ami dorbo apnake ha ha dorbo ha ha dorbo na very good yes ei bhabe dan is some question আপনি পড়ে গেল আমি ধরবো ঠিক আছে ঠিক আছে ঠিক আছে আমি ছেড়ে দেবো
So he has got the attraction and this is the cellular attraction. You can do tests by closing the eyes to exclude the once again the sensory attraction as well. So can I just come up here? CD scan. So we done the CD scan immediately after that having the sudden onset. You see these areas. So this is right side, this is left sided, and this is the cerebellar hemisphere, the posterior part of the cerebral hemisphere having the hypodensity. So the diagnosis is done, the acute cerebellar stroke. So we can say, right? So having the left sided cerebellar hemisphere lesion, so we can expect that yes, this gentleman having the left sided ataxia and the left sided features head to toe will have the difference. So we need to do the, all the tests for the head to toe to diagnose the type of the lesion, whether it's cerebellar lesion or not. So starting with the eyes examination that we do, we can do, right? So we are expecting, is it Angular Dedi ke dar, and Angular Dedi ke dar, Dedi ke dar. Yes, taka thak toh abhi ke dar. Taka thak, 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 taka thak. So we are looking for, if the cerebral arm is involved, so there will be, yes, abar thak, nahi jai jai angul thak, oh, nahi jai angul thak. Kodan, kodan, abar kodan, kodan, abar kodan. So, he has no any kinds of nystagmus, but we are expecting the left-sided horizontal nystagmus. We call the first T4 towards, towards the lesion. So we could expect the first phase towards the lesion. All right, but he has not such, such a finding. Second important talk, right, the horizontal nystagmus. And next point is the speech. Speech will be the desartic and sometimes we call the scanning and also the explosive variety or staccato variety of speech. I mean the speech will be desartic. So we'll test him by saying some of the Bengali words. So what is the Bihaspati word? Bihaspati word? Bihaspati word. I'll put it over. Bihaspati word. British constitution. British constitution. All right. He has very good speech. So we cannot say he is also having some of the uh, desartic speech. But he has a good speech as well. So the next text, the upper limb that we do, the three important tests is very important. The finger nose test. Second test is the rebound phenomena. Third test is once again the disjardical kinesia. These three important tests that we need to do. So, bam angul ta api ekhane dek nakir mudho kabo. Tara tari kabo. Tara tari. Yes, pardon? Hey, dek ha. Abar then abar angul ta touch kabo. Kabo? Ano jure kabo? Druto. Druto kabo. Druto. So he has some a little variety of intention tremor when he is approaching the target towards the target. Ano jure? So once again, he has some of the intention tremor, yes? So yes, thank you very much. Yes, 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 Alternate, alternate, alternate. So, this is called the rebound phenomenon. Having the patient the massive cerebellar syndrome, having the massive cerebral infarction, the patients may have. Patients may have the rebound and if I try to displace it, the patient will have the yes, overshooting. So this is called the rebound phenomenon. So once again, the cerebral is very important functioning to maintain the reflexes as well as the tone. Tone and reflexes are the muscles. So we are expecting the hypotonia as well as some of the hyporeflexia. And also the lower limbs that we do test the heel shin test that will be impaired and some of the gait tests that we do once again the test will be the left sided attraction. Might I listen very carefully, my target is not to show the cerebral syndrome, but the target is to reach the diagnosis, it's very important. So what I'm talking about, the starting from the head to toe, the test that we do, these are the cerebral function that we need to get some of the important findings. So what I'm saying, this is very important, the cerebral syndrome, 
So what the cerebellum really functions? I am saying the cerebellum, C for cerebellum is really important, C for coordinated function. It means the cerebellum is responsible for the coordination of the movement. So the coordination of the movement is called matria. Matria means the movement, once again. So if having the cerebellar lesion or damage due to done any of the poses, so cerebellar syndrome causing the coordination of the movements. So if I'm putting the disc, so yes, the disc matria will have the output. So what I'm saying, disc matria means the disturbances of the coordination of the movements. Coordination means the smooth movements. So each and everything that we have tested from head to toe, starting from the horizontal stigmas, and also after the speech and having upper limb and lower limb examinations, just we are trying to show and getting the findings of the disc matria. That's it, to get the findings of the disc matria. So having some of the features of the left-sided ataxia and having some of the gauge problem, having some of the speech problems, subtle problem he has. So he has got the, yes, the cerebellar syndrome with the left side. So yes, the type of the lesion, the cerebellar syndrome, second, you talk with the left side, the cerebellar hemisphere, because I say the left-sided lesion is once again the ipsilateral lesion, the left-sided cerebellar syndrome. And the third talk is the type of the, means the underlying etiology, why this is happening. And this is very much important, and that's why actually I have come for to talk with about it. So what is that? So yes, the cerebral lesion is caused by a good mnemonic, it's a very famous mnemonic, we call the past stress. So this is very important, the past stress, so that we can remember all them together, all the underlying causes of the cerebral syndrome. So if we start for the past stress, the P4, yes, P4 is very much important, the paraneoplastic cerebral syndrome. I will listen very carefully. If the patient comes up with the cerebral syndrome, so we can think of the paraneoplastic, means any of the underlying malignancy, maybe the patient may have. The most common malignancy that we need to remember, so this is called the small cell lung cancer. This is very important to reach the diagnosis of small cell lung cancer. Patient may have a cerebral attack or maybe the ataxic problem, but you can feel it, the patient may have the underlying malignancy or the cancer or something like that. So next to the P for paraneoplastic, next talk is the A4, with the pastries, A stands for the alcohol is the alcoholic cerebellar degeneration. So alcohol can cause the cerebellar damage. So starting from the head to toe, I am saying the alcohol. So once again, alcohol can cause the cerebellar damage. So once again, the P for paraneoplasty, A for alcohol, S for once again the stroke. We call it the cerebellar stroke, or we can call the posterior circulation infarct. We sometimes call it, according to the classification, we call it the POSI, means the posterior circulation infarct, means the POCI, you can call it. So next talk, yes, once in the PAS, T4, yes, the tumor, R for rare disease, rare disease starts with the Frederick's attraction, is one of the important hereditary attractions. And I for iatrogenic, one of the important drugs that we need to remember, the phenytoin, the very important potential drug can cause the cerebral syndrome. And next to the phenytoin, the, once again, the valproate, we call the PEV, yes, the phenytoin and valproate. And once again, E for endocrine. Endocrine, yes, sometimes you're getting the hypothyroidism, is an important cause of, once again, the cerebral syndrome. And last S, which is the top of the list of the S, this is called the sclerosis, this is a multiple sclerosis. So what I say, the P for paraneoplastic syndrome, A for alcohol, S for, once again, the stroke, means the posterior circulation stroke, T for tumor, means the posterior fossa tumor, basically, especially the tumor like the CP angle tumor, and once again, R for rare disease, pedic seduction, I for atrogenic, means the phenytoin and valproate, and once again, E for endocrine, and S for sclerosis. My target is not yet finished, so this is very important. Starting with the paraneoplastic, once again, the small cell lung cancer will have the important potential causes of the cerebellar syndrome. And next talk is the A for alcohol. My dear, listen very carefully the pet side. We are looking for some of the alcoholic evidences. Starting from the alcoholic evidences, starts alcohol goes to the liver first. So, getting some of the chronic liver disease findings, CLD. If I say the C for coming, L for leukonic at the pet side. So, you can get the findings of the alcoholic cerebellar uh, degeneration along with the chronic liver disease. Of course, having some of the alcoholic features. Sometimes the chronic liver disease with the alcohol the parotid swelling, some of the dubitance contracture. So these are the findings that we need to look for the alcoholic evidences. So alcoholic evidence goes to the liver and second talk the alcohol goes to the heart. Sometimes they can cause, yes, the cardiomyopathy. That means the patient may have some of the pacemaker scar, having some of the pacemaker. So that may be an important clue to reach your diagnosis of the alcoholic cerebral degeneration. Next is S for stroke. Yes, I will talk about the stroke later and T for tumor, the posterior posterior tumor is one of the important tumors that you need to remember is the CP angle tumor we call the acoustic neuron. 
And next, the R for rare disease, the Frederick's adduction is also a spinal cerebral adduction variety form. So this is also another talk that I can discuss in other video clips. And once again, I for arteries is the phenytoin. A single talk in the phenytoin, you can look for, even though the phenytoin can cause the acute variety of the symptoms after having the phenytoin, you start at the cerebellar syndrome, but the phenytoin, long-term phenytoin, having some of the evidence at the best side, you can at least can look for the gum hypoplasia. Next is the sodium valproate also can cause and next the I E for endocrine and with the hypothyroid features at least the bradycardia and brady reflection and maybe the delayed relaxation ankle jacks maybe at the bedside you can say and lastly the sclerosis with the multiple sclerosis. I'd like to now talk very important. Sometimes you're getting the unilateral cerebellar syndrome, sometimes you're getting the bilateral cerebellar syndrome. So unilateral cerebellar syndrome, I say the full neurology, even the central nervous system having the unilateral features. So the most important diagnosis, the another number that we can remember, that is the STD. STD means S for stroke, T for tumor, and D for demyelinating disorder. So S for stroke and T for yes, tumor and D for demyelinating disorder. The central nervous system dimension means that multiple sclerosis. So my dear, listen very carefully. In the cerebellar syndrome, the unilateral syndrome once again, the STD means the stroke, means the cerebellar stroke, and T for tumor is the posterior posterior tumor, or maybe the cerebellar hemisphere, any of the tumor within the cerebral hemisphere and D for demyelinating disorder with the multiple sclerosis. If this patient would be a young female, yes, and in England especially, right, uh, Scotland people are very much suffering from the multiple sclerosis. So young female having some of the cerebral syndrome, the most common, whether unilateral or bilateral, but the bilateral is more common than that of the unilateral, yes, you need to remember the multiple sclerosis. Sometimes I say that a mass is a miss, yes, a young female love, so you can remember, yes, once again, young female love with the loss of vision, having the history of optic neuritis causing the loss of vision, and having now the history of the cerebral syndrome, so diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. So, my dear, listen very carefully as the cause of etiology, the important question that we need to ask the patient. What is that? The first question we need to ask is the onset duration and progression. And based on that onset duration and progression, we divide the disease into the acute, subacute, and chronic. Acute onset means the sudden onset, any focal neurological deficit. This is stroke, nothing but the vascular block, my dear. So, yes, having the sudden onset, having some of the attraction, having some of the vomiting, vertigo, and the posterior circulation problems, yes, that we should thought about, yes, the stroke should be the first time. So we underwent, yes, the CT scan, MRI would be better basically, can, could give some of the more information, but yes, in our hospitals we have the CT scan, we've done the CT scan immediately after that, we have got the hypodensity in the left cerebellum. So yes, once again, diagnosis the left side is cerebral lesion. So what I'm saying, the sudden onset, the diagnosis should be the vascular origin. And the subacute onset with the demyelinating disorder means the multiple sclerosis. And chronic, yes, once again, it can be the degenerative disorders. And active subacute and chronic can, can have, the, yes, once again, the tumor can be presented. So what is the summary talk, my dear, this very important message to all of you guys all together. Starting with the three important questions, starting with the first question I said is, what type of deletion? So we got the, yes, this gentleman having the left-sided cerebellar syndrome. And second question, where is the lesion? Yes, his lesion is in the left cerebellar hemisphere. And third, what is the underlying etiology? Yes, once again, the posterior circulation infa causing, once again, you can say, yes, that leads to the cerebellar stroke or cerebellar infarct. That is the underlying etiology because of the sudden also. I hope that the causes of the cerebellar syndrome and also the three important questions that we got in, uh, having some of the real case and this gentleman having very cooperative. I hope that you'll have an 